Very good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy Sunday. Um, we're going to start with the morning puja and offering. And um, I guess before we start, I just want to make sure everyone is ready. And then we can start the day. Okay, thank you. So we'll start with the salutation to the Triple Jam Fist. Let's put ourselves in Anjali. And let us pay respect to the Triple Jam. Araham Sangma Sangbudo Bhagawa Bhutang Bhagawantang Aviva Demi Swakato Bhagawata Tammo Tamang Namasami Supati Pano Bhagawato Sawaka Sango Sangang Namami Let us pay homage to the Buddha. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Please put your palms together to partake in the offerings to the Buddha. The offering of the five items allows us to express our gratitude to the Buddha and serves as a symbol to help us remember the teachings. Please join wholeheartedly and read the verses together. Offering of Light. Light symbolizes wisdom. May the light of Dharma dispel the darkness of ignorance. Offering of incense. Incense symbolizes the fragrance of pure moral conduct. This reminds us to cultivate good conduct. Offering of water. Water symbolizes purity, clarity, and calmness. It reminds us to practice the Buddha's teachings, to cleanse one's mind, which is full of desires, ill will, and delusion, to attain the state of purity. Offering of fruits. Fruits symbolize the ultimate fruit of enlightenment, which is our goal. They also remind us that all actions will have their effects. Offering of flowers. Flowers symbolize impermanence. The freshness, fragrance, and beauty of flowers are impermanent. This reminds us that we should all live in the present. Remembering thus, we should reduce our craving and attachment. Now let us chant the verses for taking the three refuges. Bhutang saranang gachami, Dhamang saranang gachami, Sangang saranang gachami, Dutiyampi bhutang saranang gachami, 
Tutiyam pita mang saranang gachami Tutiyam pisangang saranang gachami Tatiyam piputang saranang gachami Tatiyam pisangang saranang gachami Tatiyam pita mang saranang gachami Tatiyam pisangang saranang gachami We chant these verses to observe the five precepts. Panati pata veramani sika padang samadhyami Adinatana viramani sika padang samadhyami Kame sumi chachara Viramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Musawada Viramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Sura Meraya Majapamadatana Viramani Sika Padang Samadhyami let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Buddha. Iti piso bhagava arahang samma sambudo vija charana sampano sukato loka vidu anutaro purisadamasarati sat Tadeva Manusana Puto Bhagavati. Let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Dhamma. Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko Ehipasiko O Panayiko Pachatam Veritabo Vinuhiti Recollection of the Sangha. Let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Sangha. Supati Pano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Uju pati pano bhagavato sahavaka sango Nyaya pati pano bhagavato sahavaka sango Samichi pati pano bhagavato sahavaka sango Yadidam chatari purisa yugani atta purisa pugala esa bhagavato sahavaka sango ahuneyo pahuneyo dakineyo anjali karaniyo Anutaram punya ketam lokasati Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu Before Bhante start, I will do a very short introduction for Bhante. Bhante Aparika Siri Sumana Ordained as a Sri Lankan Buddhist monk at age 12 in 1998. Subhante Sumana went on to obtain his higher ordination in 2007. He graduated from the University of Rahuna in Sri Lanka with a BA in Buddhist philosophy in 2011. He obtained his second degree in Buddhist studies from the Buddhist College of Singapore in year 2020. 
Currently, Bhante Sumaner is studying for his Master's in Buddhist Studies in Mahachula Longkorn Raja Vidyalaya University. He is also pursuing his Master's in Buddhist Counseling at the University of Kalaniya, Sri Lanka. Bhante Sumana has given numerous Dhamma talks in various Buddhist societies in Singapore and Malaysia. So, without much ado, I'll hand the mic over to you, Bhante, for a meditation. Namo Buddhaya. Good morning to all of you, friends. Namo Buddhaya. Good morning to all of you, friends. Uh, let's practice uh, awareness meditation for uh, 10 minutes. Close your eyes and sit in a comfortable posture and bring your attention to your face. Observe your face starting from head to chin. The forehead, eyebrows, eyes, nose, ears, cheeks, lips and chin. Observe all the sensations arising in this area. Now slowly bring your attention to your nose. Observe natural breath. Inhale and exhale. In this environment, the cooling air goes through your nostrils. Quite warm, airy, warm air going out through your nostrils. From the day we born until to the day we are leaving this world, breathing is occurring and happening. Even we are aware or not, this natural breath has the ability to Calm your mind. Bring peace to your mind.
If your mind wandering, bring back that mind to the same meditation object, breathing in and breathing out. सब पापस अकरनम कुसलस उपसंपदा सचित परियो दपनं एतं बुद्धान सासनं साधु साधु Sadhu Can I, can I?
ఓకే ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఐఎమ్ హ్యాపీ టు సీ యూ ఆల్ టుడే ఇన్ దిస్ బుద్ధిస్ట్ ఫెలోషిప్ ప్రమిసరీ యాక్చువల్లీ దిస్ ఈస్ ది సెకండ్ టాక్ దట్ ఐఎమ్ కండక్టింగ్ ఇన్ బుద్ధిస్ట్ ఫెలోషిప్ బట్ దిస్ ఈస్ ది ఫస్ట్ టైమ్ ఐ ఐఎమ్ హియర్ ఇన్ దిస్ ప్రమిసరీ లాస్ట్ టైమ్ ఐ కండక్టెడ్ మై దమ్మ టాక్ వి అర్ సోమ్ సో now finally i am here physically right uh, so today our topic is buddhist teaching on consumption of food obviously you can see the slide full of food the food is served therefore i would like to invite you all to enjoy and uh, serve your food as much as you like after listening to this dhamma talk so let's start this dhamma talk with the greet of bon appetit okay so the first slide you can see nothing now even though i am going to talk about the buddhist perspective of food i thought it is nice to provide an understanding what are the common people saying about food so i selected few quotes from internet you may have come across these quotes it says the main facts in human life are five birth food sleep love and death obviously food is consider one of the major factor in human life the second one is the belly rules the mind does anyone agree with this if you are not agree i ask you to do some diet plans right when you are on diet you can understand how your belly is ruling your mind food has such impact on our life the third one says one cannot think well love well sleep well if one has not dined well this is also a fact when someone is in hunger obviously the hunger follows anger when people are hungry they are normally angry so when you are hungry you are obviously angry and you cannot think well when you are angry the thoughts that appear inside your mind is not wholesome thoughts and when you cannot think well you cannot spread loving kindness compassion towards others and obviously you cannot sleep well also that is why the food is very important in human life and here it is there are no we in food some people they can share so many things but when it come to food it is very difficult that is why buddha starts his teaching emphasis on importance of dana offerings the food is one of the major fact in offering dana let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food this is quite famous and it says the importance of choosing the correct food and the amount that we take in food food is 
our common ground a universal experience you may be having a rough time come to a conclusion in your office room in your meeting room but immediately the ring the bell for lunch all are getting ready for the lunch it is the common ground and you can start your discussions after food there will be more than 50% of a ch chance to come conclusion when you are full and it says that it is a universal experience and here in this quote it says even though people are thinking a lot mainly many people are thinking about food maybe you all are right now showing you are listening to this talk attentively but i'm not sure what is inside your mind maybe you are all planning for your lunch in obviously in three meals of our day we spend quite a, a big amount of time for thinking what to eat especially in singapore right when you go for a food court there are varieties of choices very difficult right very difficult to choose if someone invited me for a restaurant or a hawker center for lunch i obviously says you can order i will eat <laughs> it is a very difficult choice to choose food there are many varieties of food and food is really and truly the most effective medicine the buddha also says jigacha parama roga hunger is the greatest disease so when you are having some certain problems but if you the time that you are taking food in half of your problem already solved because your attention is on food and also the food provide a certain kind of relaxation to your mind and body lastly the food is symbolic of love when words are inadequate this one i know about my personal experiences as a buddhist monk devotees want to show their love but they cannot show their love by words they are showing their love for monks are offering food that is why many monks are having different kind of disease and uh having uh, uh the problem of obesity right even ajan brahm in one of in his talk he mentioned his belly is the perfect example for compassion because so many people loves him and offer lots of food he cannot refuse and he take that is how people are showing affection for monks i am sure this affection you are showing to your family members friends and your colleagues too now keep aside this uh, cordial talk now we are going to our main topic today i am here to conduct the talk about consumption of food therefore i intended to uh, point out my talk as outlines first we are going to discuss about conceptual understanding second buddhist teaching on edible food physiological function of food limitation of having food social functions of food and lastly uh, psychological function of food followed by conclusion conceptual understanding of food as you can see the food is the third most important thing for living beings to provide energy and development maintain life or stimulate growth after air and water it is one of the most complicated set of chemicals which plays an important role in the promotion of health and disease prevention 
This is the modern understanding or scientific understanding of food. And now we are going to see what is the Buddhist understanding of food. Uh, the, the term pa in Pali, we use ahara for the food. And according to the New Pali English Dictionary, it says ahara uh, as a definition, food, nutriment, sustenance, fuel, and support. According to the English and Pali Dictionary, PTS, uh, ahara means feeding, support, food, and nutriment. So now you can see, even though uh, common understanding in modern world, we are using food as a source of energy, but Buddhism has a wider and broad understanding of food. That is why it is essential for us to uh, go through the Buddhist teaching and understand much on what Buddha taught about food. The Buddha explains there are four kinds of nutrients which enable living beings to grow and maintain life. So, in Buddhist teaching, there are four kinds of nutriment. The first one is edible food, kabalinkara ahara, the food that we are taking day to day life. And the second one, food of sense impression, pasa ahara, it is also considered as contact. So it is not that we are enjoying food via our mouth. We are enjoying food by our eyes, ears, tongue, touch, and nose. Later I will explain how. And the third one is food for volition, mano sanchetanika, ahara. It is related to the mind. And the lastly, food for consciousness, vijnana, ahara. In this talk, my main objective is to provide an understanding about teaching on edible food. Among the four factors, the first factor. The Buddha said that there are four necessities in our life, clothing, food, lodging, and medicine. My first talk was about clothing, I discuss about uh, under Arahanta's banner. I thought it is nice to keep the consistency. That is why I choose the second topic as food. And when we talk about food, actually as a Samanera or a novice monk, when I entered to the monastic order, the first thing that I came across about food found in the book, there is a book specially compiled for Buddhist novice monks called Samanir Manadaham Potal. In this book, uh, there are different varieties of Dhamma taught and uh, collected in this book, but the, one of the main uh, teaching that I found in this uh, book is the novice's question, Samanir Panjan. This is a very important section the Buddha asked 10 questions from seven-year-old novice monk called Sopaka. And he posed these 10 questions and then Venerable Sopaka provide answers. The first question, what is one? Do you have any answer for what is one? The Buddha asked this question from Seven year old novice monk. It is very tough in our life giving the priority what is one. But it is said that Venerable Sopaka's answer was all animals sustain, sub, subsist on food. Ekanama king, sabbe satta aharatitika. That is why food is essential. 
whether you consider yourself as a, a omnivorous or a, 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 a vegetarian or a meat eater, it doesn't matter. You are consuming food. And it is not only come under these three sections, it's also in Kama Loka, in this sense sphere, all animals are experiencing food. It is also true for uh, sensual other realms that we call Rupa Loka and Arupa Loka, fine material world and immaterial world. They are all consuming food. Therefore, all animals subsist on food. This is to be understood. Apart from that, we can find in Diganikaya Agganya Sutta the human evolution of uh, human evolution story. According to this story, uh, there was a long time ago when the earth is forming, there was a beings who were uh, lived in uh, Abhasar Brahmaloka, one of the uh, immaterial world, came to this earth. At that time, they were enjoying the food of happiness. They were not able to experience edible food that we are experiencing. This is the first step of human evolution. And this sutta explain how this human evolution occurred with the help of evolution of food. The second factor is discussed that after a very long time period, the earth was covered with a juicy skin of just like a milk, yogurt or a curd. And the beings who were enjoying themselves happiness as a food started slowly evolved into enjoying the food of this yogurt or a curd-like substance. After very long time of period, this food were disappeared after consumption and then later it appears a mushroom kind of food. So now you can see the first step, they were enjoying happiness as a food. Second, a very fine kind of food like yogurt or a curd. And the third step, appearing of mushrooms and they started eating these ex mushrooms. So the, the fourth step is after a very long time of period time, these mushrooms also disappeared and slowly it started growing uh, roots like cassava and sweet potato. So people started eating this food. In the fourth and the fifth factor, it says another long time of period of time, it appeared rice plant, which we are eating now. But at the beginning of this stage, these rice were not covered with husk and kernel. At any time, you can go there and eat. But for the time being, after an evolutionary period, we have to remove the husk and make it as a, a rice and we need to cook and eat. It shows that gradually how food evolved from happiness to hard edible food. Nowadays that we can see, in previous time, maybe you also have experience, everywhere there are trees, good fruits, can eat, can enjoy at any time. But now, without fertilizer, it is hard to grow trees and fruits. Why? Because a time, when a time passed by, these earth are disappearing their own kind of substance. This is the evolutionary period. So people came up with new ideas in order to increase the level of the taste of the food, they use fertilizer. 
Not only that, after cooking these food, they use lots of artificial coloring and lots of artificial tastes, right? MSG and so on. In order to make things nice and delicious. That is how the beginning story explained in according to Buddhism how the food evolved by time passed by. And now we are going to discuss about physical function of food. In physical function, general understanding like the first function of the food is to provide energy and our uh, body needs the energy to sustain the involuntary process essential for the uh, uh, continuance of life to carry out professional household and recreational activities to convert food in digest it use usable nutrient into body to grow and keep us warm that is how the function of food is explained uh, physiologically but according to Buddhism that we can see, the Buddha discuss also about this factor in Kim Dada Sutta of Devata Samyutta. In Devata Samyutta, it's explained that there was a one divine being who approached the Buddha and asked a question. Kim Dado Balado Hoti gives what does one give strength and then the Buddha says Annado Balado Hoti giving food one gives strength so we can understand Buddhism also discuss food as a form of energy providing a recreational and professional activities that we are engaging in in order to explain this fact further I would like to explain another story. One day, uh, there was a very old man who is uh, lost his few cows from his cowherd. Early morning, he went on searching for the two cows who disappeared. And then, eventually, after midday, he came to Jetavana Rama, where the Buddha was residing. And the Buddha saw this person, he is old and obviously very tired. Then Buddha asked one of his attendant monk to provide him water and food and provided him a place to rest. After he having food and proper rest, Buddha approached him and asked, what is the reason of visiting this uh, premisary the temple and then he said I am suffering from losing my two cows I cannot go back home without these two cows therefore I please help me to find and then the Buddha started preaching the Dhamma immediately after the end of the Dhamma talk this person entered to the Sotapanna the stream entry do you think Immediately when this person came into Jetavana Rama, if the Buddha started preaching Dhamma, he will be able to attain this kind of uh, uh, first fruit of Buddhist path of liberation, Sotapanna? I don't think so, because his mind was not ready. Obviously he was hungry, thirsty and tired. That is why after that the Buddha says, you need to preach Dhamma, for people who are in a proper mental and physical condition. If not, the Dhamma that you are sharing may not be able to grasp by the listeners. Teaching on Buddhism considered the importance of having the ability to walk, talk and provide proper physical conditions. That is why the Buddha always emphasized the balanced life mentally and physically. The, another factor that we can find in Anguttara Nikaya Suppavasa Sutta, in this Sutta, Suppavasa is a lady who likes to offer 
many dana for monks. And one day, uh, the Buddha explained that Supavasa, who gives food, gives the recipient four things. What are these four? Ayu, life, vanna, beauty, the color complexion, sukha, happiness, bala, strength. Obviously, when a person is in uh, a condition of starvation, we can see by his color skin, he is in a desperate uh, situation of having food, right? They need to have food because the color become pale of your skin. So food provides the color, the beauty and longevity in our life. It also provides happiness and strength. In Supavasa Sutta, the Buddha says it is very important offering food for others. It is one of the greatest kind of help that you can do for others. Uh, to prove this fact, I would like to tell this story. You know that the Buddha, as a Prince Siddhartha, went on six years of uh, austerity life, right? Seeking for enlightenment. But finally he was, he was able to understand that this is not the correct path. Subtle teachings cannot be understood without having a proper condition in bodily and mentally. Body and mind interchangeably affecting each other. If you are in a proper health condition in physically, your mind also is strong. But similarly, when you are in, not in a proper mental condition, your body also like to get sick. This is, the, this is not only uh, the teaching of the Buddha, but also modern scientific research also has find this supportive evidence for this kind of experiences. So the Buddha emphasized the importance of food as a, uh, as, as a yogi or a practitioner and he gave up austerity practices and started taking meals and gaining his strength. That is how he was able to understand or attain the liberation, the supreme bliss, nirvana. So now we are going to discuss about social functions of food. Food is just not a physical thing that provides physical uh, strength, but also it provides a good environment for us to get together, hang out together, and have a strong relationship in uh, social life. So it is obvious that food has always been the central part of our community and social, cultural, and religious life. It has been an expression of love, friendship, happiness at religious, social, and family get together. Many of the occasions are related to special food like uh, birthdays, Holi, Diwali, Christmas, Eid, and Vesak. In these kind of religious events, we can see there are different kind of food is being prepared and distributed. On all these occasions, food indirectly serves and as a powerful and effective instrument for developing social rapport. So we can understand the importance of food, not only for the human life, as a physical, gaining physical strength, but also having a proper social kind of connections. In Anatha Pindika is one of the good example that we can take here. Anatha Pindika, the first, his name was Sudatta, was born into wealthy merchant family in Sravasti. And he became widely known by the nickname Anatha Pindika because he practiced so many offerings, giving dana food for many people who are destitute. That is why he was received this nickname Anatha Pindika. Anatha means the people who are destitute. Pindika means the person who give food. The person who give food for destitute people is called Anatha Pindika. And he was considered as the one of the 
most uh, famous and important character in Buddhist order, in Buddhist teachings, especially in Theravada tradition. So, uh, his, these great activities gave him uh, well recognition inside the society. Today also, when people are practicing offering dana or giving and inviting people for lunch and breakfast, they were considered as a kind of socially well recognized people. They were recognized by many others as a kind hearted people and lovable people, caring people. Not only that, in Mitta and Samsa Sutta, the Buddha explained if you want to have a good friends, many friends, you can start with sharing food. Sharing food is one of the major factor in order to make friends. And also, if you have good friends, the Buddha says in Mittani Sansa Sutta, you will never starve. Because friends are always ready and welcome you for sharing their food. In Singhalavada Sutta, it explains one of the quality that a good friend process is sharing the food that he received with his other friends. So if you are a good friend, if you receive a delicious and nice food, you must share with your friends. It makes your bond uh, much stronger and it gives confidence for others and also it encourages others to share food also. This is, the fa this is a fact that you can practice in your life. I'm sure uh, when you were working, working place, if you got uh, COVID last few years, I'm sure that you may have received some support from your friends and family members. Different food may have offered to you. Medicine may have offered to you. If you, have, if you receive this kind of food and caring, surely you are a good friend. And also, you need to do it again as a return. In return, you need to do it the same way. That is how we can have a proper social condition practicing the food sharing. So, consumption of food in Buddhism, not only eating, but also sharing food. Uh, according to uh, the Buddha's teaching, it is not only sharing and it is not only eating, but as a social beings, we are living in ethical world, we need to practice ethics, right? When it comes to eat, there are so many ethics have been explained by the Buddha in Buddhist teachings. Uh, so we can have a look about several of important factors. A whole section of 75 of Sekhya training guidelines in concern that the importance of behavior of daily activities of monks. The Buddha has practically considered, particularly considered the method of taking food because of its ethical value. It starts from the day you are entered to the monastic order, you have to go for searching food, arms round. The Buddha, starting from this point, until you finish of washing your arms bowl, have provided proper guidelines one by one how to deal with these situations, how to be nice and well behaved while you are going for seeking food and also while you are eating. So there are 29 Vinay rules are out of these 75 Sekhya rules directly connected with food. And we are going to discuss few of them. Uh, so the first one is consuming food provided as arms appreciatively. This is the beginning point of being grateful. If you receive something from your friend, a food, 
you need to be grateful for your friend while you are eating. Not only that, eating such food with attention, focus onto the plate or bowl. For example, you can see in this image, these monks are how attentively, according to the Buddha's teaching, they are looking at the bowl and they are uh, appreciatively consuming this food. So it is one of the great quality that we all can practice. And the third one, not eating arms from taking mouthful from the heap. When food is served, Buddhist monks are not allowed to choose here and there. They have to mix it properly and eat. Whether you are using your hand or spoon or chopstick, it doesn't matter. You need, you can, we can actually follow this method. Not only Buddhist monks, but also devotees. You also can practice. The fourth one, not looking at another's bowl, intention or out, finding out faults. Usually it is a very common thing while we were eating, we like to look at others' plate. If he is eating too much, if he has served a lot, we tend to, uh, inside our mind, we are tend to uh, discriminate and kind of uh, thoughts at appearing in our, uh, our mind usually. Like he is eating a lot, right? This kind of ideas can be appear. That is why Buddha says it is not okay to look at others, but find your fault yourself. That is why you need to focus on your arms ball. And the sixth one is not taking an extra large mouthful. If you are using your spoon, you can see that if you take one spoonful of food, maybe you cannot put it inside your mouth, right? Because it is too big, the amount. Now, when you are using hand, especially uh, in this tradition, Theravada tradition, we are using our hand. So, we are mixing the food like this, and if we take like this, can put this all food inside our mouth? Cannot, right? That is why these are actually uh, no need to mention, but Buddha give exactly with all details. There are no room for mistakes. That is the most important thing in Buddhist Vinaya rules. Uh, the next one that we can see, making a round mouthful. Uh, we cannot take uh, food like separate from each, uh, each part. We need to take all and then mix it properly and take it into our hand in a proper size amount. Uh, then the next one is also very important that it says not opening the mouth when the mouthful has yet to be brought to it, which means that while you are mixing your food or while you are scooping your food with your spoon, do not open your mouth. It is too early. Right? These are very important rules that we can follow in the society, right? So, uh, it is very important because actually when we are started eating food, already inside our mouth, the mind already prepared to it. So the saliva already accumulating inside our mouth, right? If you open wider your mouth before the food comes in, you know what will happen. So you need to be mindful. The ninth one, not nimbling at mouthful of food, okay? And the tenth one, not puffing out cheeks. Do not eat like this. It may be very cute for a for a squirrel, right? It is very cute. But can you imagine if this is a person, a human, it will be actually not nice, right? Disgusted by others. Therefore, we need to be mindful and know the limit that how much amount of food that you can put inside your mouth. That is the importance of being aware. And the eleventh one, not eating, shaking food of the hand. Now, uh, this one's 
maybe you can apply for your chopsticks, right? When you use your chopstick, do not shake your chopstick. Do not shake your spoon and fork because it now already soiled with the food, the mix with the food. When you shake it, those food may uh, throwing here and there. That is why it is important uh, to be mindful and without uh, shaking your hand or chopstick or spoon. And the twelfth one, not eating by scattering lumps of rice about. Now you can see, uh, if you are eating food, scattering here and there, you are copying and imitating a childish behavior. Therefore, do not do that. The thirteenth one, not eating with tongue sticking out. Right? Do not stick the tongue. That actually these are very simple things, but when people are observing, especially monks, when the monks are having lunch and dinner, people are observing. If monks are behaving uh, not according to the Vinay rules uh, promulgated by the Buddha, people may think uh, bad about monks. That is why Buddha wanted to be very specific about these rules. And not eating, making a uh, slurping noise. You need to be aware, especially when you are eating noodles, right? When you are eating noodles, when you put with the chopstick inside and then making so many nice noises, right? You can imagine 500 monks are sitting on a row and eating noodles like this. What will happen? Total chaos, right? So much noises. That is why we need to be aware. And the last one is not eating licking one's hand. We should not. These are actually very simple things, but when you follow these simple rules, it makes you perfect when you are eating. Others will look highly upon you. They will appreciate you. It is very important for human being to practice. Not eating, licking the bowl. So peop these things are appeared because some monks may have done that in the certain time period of time. That is why it appeared. And then not eating, uh, licking the lips, right? Maybe you are hungry, but there is always food always right in front of you. You need to have proper uh, amount of patience and you need to have a proper amount of mindfulness in order to overcome this kind of behaviors. Not accepting a water vessel with hand soiled by food. Now when you are using your hand, actually you are using the right hand for eating uh, and you are not allowed to use the right, the same hand in order to take the, uh, the glass of water. Similarly, we can put this uh, idea that uh, when we are using our chopstick, we do not uh, serve from the bowl directly from the, the same chopstick that we are eating, right? So we have different sets of chopstick for serving food. That is why these are very important in Buddhist uh, ethical life. So you can also follow these. Uh, I think now it will be enough. There are 23 Vinay rules. I'm uh, not going to go through all. Uh, therefore, I think this will be enough for you to understand the importance of ethical behavior or eating food. And now we are moving to the uh, limitation of food. What are the limits of food? So who thinks that you are belong to which group? Less food or more food? Which group the, you are in? No food? I mean less food? Or more food? More food? Okay. And we see how, how it goes, huh? And then uh, you can see this image, right? Uh, actually, the more food or less food, it is not the importance of Buddhism. It is important uh, what you eat and how you eat and what is the uh, amount that you are taking. So the Buddha says, uh, if you are practicing less food, 
it is a certain kind of extreme. The Buddha practiced this one before, enlight before his enlightenment. Six years of his practice, he uh, went, went through this self-mortification. And he practices only eating food which uh, fall down where he sit and on his lap. There are very little amount of food when you are sitting under a tree will be fall into your lap, right? Very small amount. But the Buddha sustained from this kind of uh, extreme practices also. The reason why people believe they can attain enlightenment by overcoming all the desires. Among the desires, desire for food is very strong. Later we can see why. So people believe self-mortification is the only way to attain enlightenment. But it is, it is not. In Mahasihanada Sutta, Buddha explained a great details of account how he practices this self-mortification and eventually how he realized that this is not the path for liberation or enlightenment. So the second picture, it says that sensual indulgence, the other extreme, more food. According to commentaries, that there are four types of people who were uh, practicing this sensual indulgence over food. So the first person called uh, the person who eat, eat, eat until he cannot bear it and fell down where the place that he was eating. This is how they seek enlightenment. But they were not able to attain that level. And the second person was the person who eat, eat, eat until he vomits. After vomiting, he started eating again because they believe the desire for food can overcome only by eating. That is the reason for having these kind of practices. And the third one, they eat, eat, eat until they cannot close their mouth. It says that kakamasaka, which crows come and take food from your mouth. That amount of sensual indulgence into the other extreme. The last one, alam sataka, people eat, eat, eat until they remove their clothes, button, removing their buttons of their clothes. Have you experienced this one? When you are having and enjoying lunch, changing your belt and trying to fit into your uh, belly? Have you tried until to this extent? No, no, this is not that one. This means they are removing all their clothes until they cannot breathe that amount of level of uh, taking food. So the Buddha says, these are two extremes that which cannot attain enlightenment. Not the extreme of less food, which means the no food, almost no food, and the other extreme, sensual indulgence, having more food as one can take in. These are the two extremes practiced in the time of the Buddha. And in the uh, Donapaka Sutta, the Buddha preach a very wonderful uh, stanza for King Pasenadi Kosala. King Pasenadi Kosala was an overweight king. He was, one day, he came to see the Buddha and he uh, shows the difficulty of sitting down because he was too fat. And he cannot even catch his breath because he is too fat for uh, uh, to, to taking too much food. And then the Buddha advised him with wonderful stanza. When a man is always mindful, knowing moderation in the food he eats, his ailments then diminish, he ages slowly, uh, guarding his life. If you want to live long, 
the Buddha provide the proper medicine that eat knowing the moderation of food. If you want to be healthy, you need to know the limit that you are taking in. It also provides us comfort. Maybe you have experienced once, once in a while, maybe uh, out of craving, we all eat uh, until we are so full. But then immediately we realize that the amount of food that I took is very difficult to digest. So we are suffering. That is why the Buddha says, when we, are not, when we can overcome the craving, we know the moderation of food, the limit that we should take in. And in Ovada Pati Mokka Sutta, the Buddha's first advice for monastics, it also includes the importance of taking moderation of food. It says, uh, there are sets of rules promulgated by the Buddha, not insulting, not harming, cultivating restraint with the uh, respect for the training and mod modesty in eating and contentment with the dwelling phase, developing the mindfulness. These are the teachings or the advice of the Buddha. So in this first set of teaching, Ovada Pati Mokka, we can see the importance of moderate mod modesty in eating. So you need to know what are the limits that you can take in. The Buddha provided a wonderful uh, example in uh, Baddhali Sutta. So this Baddhali Sutta, it explained, uh, there was a one monk called Baddhali. He entered to the monastic order recently. And then uh, the Buddha had no any uh, rule, set of rules at that time of period regarding taking dinner. At the beginning stage, monks went on begging food for dinner time also. But because of difficulty of finding food at dinner time, there are so many interesting stories have been explained in Vinaya Pitaka. One day, a monk went seeking food in the night time, evening, dinner. So he went on and stayed at the doorstep. A lady, after cooking, uh, washing all the bowls and then came out and threw water. Because of the darkness, the water directly threw into the monk. This is one of the story experienced by Buddhist monk. And the second one, one day, another monk who is seek, going for seeking food fall down into a pit because at evening time they were not able to see properly. The third story that it explained in Vinaya Pitaka that one day another monk went for the food and stay uh, near the kitchen area. When they are going for food, the monks were not allowed to ask people shouting, give me food. They have to stay calmly until people notice and offer the food. So he keep waiting until midnight. Nobody see, saw him. So he came uh, with empty bowls. And the, the fourth story, one day another monk waiting for a food and the lady came out and she got scared and started to scream, there is a ghost outside. So there are so many these kind of stories have been explained in Vinaya Pitaka. Why Buddha promulgated not, it is not, uh, you should not eat for going arms round for dinner at night. And the, this kind of, uh, based on these kind of incidents and also knowing the importance of having a one meal per day, the Buddha promulgated Vinaya rule for not having uh, after midday for the monks to uh, restrain from taking food. So uh, Badda Ali, the, this venerable monk, and he heard this story and he went to the Buddha and said, uh, sorry, I am not going to try to eat my food in one sitting per day. For when eating once a day, I might feel remorse and regret. This was the complaint of this monk. So he was desperate to have a 
two meals per day. And then the Buddha said, okay, if you are thinking so, maybe you can take some portion for you to uh, consume later. But the Venerable Baddali again refused. He said he want to have three times a meal a day. And then until the three months of uh, rains retreat, he practices according to his wish. But after three months' time, he understood why the Buddha promulgated this Vinaya rule and he went to the Buddha and confessed, Dear Venerable Sir, I am so sorry for not behaving according to your advices and please forgive me. And then the Buddha forgave this monk and all of the monks started uh, restraining food after midday. That is the story that what is the, the teachings of the Buddha in order to restraining food from afternoon. So food is always a, a very big trouble making in Buddhist order. Even uh, one of the other incident that we can see in Devadatta, Venerable Devadatta, who is the uh, uh, one of the uh, notorious monk in uh, Buddhist stories. So he also came up with uh, five acceptances. So he came and asked the Buddha to promulgate Vinaya rules to be vegetarian for the rest of the lifetime when monk is monk in entered the monastic order. But the Buddha says it is personal choice that one can choose uh, whether to be vegetarian or non-vegetarian. So I'm not going to touch that topic. It is a very big topic and maybe uh, we can discuss it in another day. Maybe you have already heard about this topic uh, numerous times. So according to the Maha Sakuludai Sutta, the Buddha was praised by Venerable Sakuludai in uh, numerous of occasions saying five great qualities. Uh, one of the great qualities is the blessed one eat little and praise eating little. But the Buddha's answer was, no, I am not. I am not eating little. When I am hungry, I eat uh, a lot. And also when I am not hungry, I am not eating a lot. Therefore, you cannot categorize me under uh, a person who is taking less food or more food. It depends on the appetite and the hunger that experiencing the moment. And the second factor, uh, he praised, by the Buddha, praised the Buddha by saying that Buddha is contented with uh, whatever the robes that he was offered. And then Buddha says, no, I am not. Sometimes I receive good robes, then I wear these good robes. And sometimes I receive uh, worn out robes, I also wear these worn out robes. I am not exactly uh, clinging into one section, but I am experiencing all these different kind of experiences. And the third one is, the blessed one is content with his uh, kind of food. Uh, only go arms round. Then the Buddha says, no, I'm not only going arms round. When people invite me to the house, I go to the house and eat also. Therefore, I'm not solely depend my life on arms food. That is why these are considered very important factors that Buddha says, it is very important not considering these qualities. It is the quality that you consider and praise the Buddha by his achievement of enlightenment. That is the most important factor. It is not the way he eat or the way he behaves. It is the enlightenment that the important thing to be praised worthy. So uh, he was praised that he is uh, always like to be live a secluded life, but it is not. When there is a company, Buddha always enjoyed the company of other monks discussing and uh, giving advice for the monks. Now we are moving to the uh, psychological function of food. So here our main discussion is going towards enlightenment. How Buddha used the food as a proper means to attain enlightenment. So in Sabbhasava Sutta, the Buddha says, the ending of the defilement is only possible for one who knows and sees. 
not for one who does not know and does not see. Therefore, it is important to be mindful and see and to know what are the uh, defilements appearing inside our mind. And the Buddha in this sutta says there are different kind of defilements, seven kind of defilements, and they are abandoned by these kind of methods. So he says we need to uh, avoid seeing and restraining, using, tolerating, avoiding, destroying and developing. So what do you think in which category we can overcome the craving for food? Whether we can stop seeing food? No, right? Obviously we cannot. And we were able to restrain not eating? No, we have to eat. And what about the tolerating? There are food that but I'm not going to eat. I'm going to practice toleration. Can you practice? No. And avoiding? No. Destroying food? You think can overcome? No, obviously not, right? Developing. Maybe you have a nice, uh, some kind certain of food, but you want to modify it and make it nicer. No, this is not the method. The method explained by the Buddha to overcome craving for food is using. We need to use wisely and reflecting why we are eating. So Buddha says, he uses arms food neither for amusement, nor for intoxication, nor for the sake of physical beauty and attractiveness, but only for the endurance and a continuance of this body, for ending discomfort and for assisting the holy life, considering thus I shall terminate all feelings and uh, without rousing new feeling and I shall be healthy and blameless and shall I live in comfort. So the Buddha says it is important to look at the food as a substance providing energy for us. It is not to enjoy or gratify our senses that we take food. We should take food with the understanding of we are eating this food in order to prolong our life. That is the correct attitude that you can use when you are eating. Uh, in a Putta Mamsa Sutta, the Buddha provide an example. Uh, this example may be quite terrifying for someone, uh, some, somebody, but uh, according to the Sutta, that it is an imaginative uh, experience that how to deal with food, uh, material food. For uh, the simile that explained in this Sutta, a couple going for uh, uh, going in a journey crossing a desert, and at the middle of the desert, the, they are going. Oh, they are all the food is uh, over, and then they had their only child. In order to make this journey to cross over, they have to kill this uh, the child and eat. Then Buddha says, when this kind of occasion, when you are eating this food, are you going to enjoy this food? No, sure not. Because this is the child that born from the same mother and father. And also, you cannot enjoy eating this food. And you are not uh, eating this food for uh, beautification of your body. It is not the, uh, for uh, enjoyment of your body, but because in order to cross this desert, that, that is the main purpose. Similarly, when we are taking food, we need to be aware that we are eating this food for the sake of attaining enlightenment and crossing over the journey of samsara. That is the idea provided by the Buddha. And the objective is to overcome sensual gratification. Finally, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, two, sut uh, two sutta, but in these two suttas, it discuss one similar analogy, uh, a sutta. It says that there are five things if practice lead to the destruction of defilements. In order to overcome defilements, you can practice these four uh, kind of meditations. 
practicing impurity of the body, asubha sanya, how this body is impure, you can practice on it. The third one, not taking delight in the world, sabbaloke anabhirata sanya. Fourth one, impermanence of all aggregates, sabba sankaresu anicca sanya. And the fifth one, to be mindful over the death, marna sati. And we are going to the second one, that is perceiving the impurity of material food. Ahare patikula sanya. So I recommend you that these practices are for the practitioners of a Buddhist path in serious manner for enlightenment. But uh, these practices we can uh, use in a certain level of our life, but not to the extreme. Otherwise, you may see there is no point of uh, brushing your teeth and uh, make, doing makeup in your face and all these things because asubha sanya, you need to be uh, see the impurity of body. No, it is not. You need to be well dressed and uh, well taken care of your body. At the same time, you need to know even though how much we are taking care of our body, the impurity is there. So that is the general understanding. Similarly, uh, sometimes when some practitioners, they practice over uh, perceiving the impurity of food, they cannot take food. They, uh, they are feeling that the vomiting kind of feeling because when you see the food as uh, inside the digestive system, you may uh, get this kind of reactions automatically in your body. Therefore, you need to practice it with some certain level of understanding of Buddhism. And now we are going to see the importance of uh, hunger. Why? Hunger is very important. And because of hunger, we eat. Maybe it is vegetarian. Maybe there are some fruit. Maybe you are consider yourself as a meat eater. No matter what, uh, the practices that you are taking in, finally, it goes to here, inside your tummy. Once it is gone inside your tummy, it is just a repulsive thing inside your body. So we need to know the effective methods in order to overcome, uh, in order to overcome our desires. So the Buddha uses this analogy. You can practice this and overcome strong desire for the food. Uh, and this is the uh, final slide. And I'm going to conclude this Dhamma talk. So you can see uh, a nice plate of food, right? So now we are going to see uh, how we are going to gratify our senses because of food. So can you guess? When you are eating, we are not eating only to uh, for our tummy or for our hunger. Actually, when we are eating, we are gratifying our five senses. For example, there are two different plates of food. One is nicely arranged, the other one is not nicely arranged. Which one you choose? <laughs> Obviously, we are choosing the nicely arranged food. Why? We are gratifying our eyes with the food. And you see, when the, the food is served, but if you cannot uh, feel the nice fragrance from this food, usually you take food and keep it closer to your nose and check whether this food got nice smell or not. Food is food, but you can eat. But we need to gratify our nose while we are eating food. And hearing, have you tried papadam in your life? <laughs> Crackers, right? Now this papadam, why do we eat papadam? Does it got any nutrients? I don't think so. The only purpose we are eating papadam and crackers, because of crispy sound, right? When the crispiness is not there, we are not tend to eat, right? We need to have a sound, which means 
we are gratifying our ears also with the food. Similarly, touch. There are two plates of cakes. One is very hard, one is nicely cooked, and when you touch, it's perfect. Which one you choose? The same ingredient, the same cake, one is very hard to eat, the other one is nicely baked. Which one you choose? Nicely baked. Why? The touch. You are gratifying your touch also. And lastly, you are tasting. After enjoying all these senses, finally we are come to the tasting part. You can see how we are manipulated by food. That is why in this world there are so many food outlets. There are so many. The same food cook in different manner. I am not telling you to avoid these outlets and do not enjoy these food. You can of course enjoy, but you need to know what is the purpose that we are enjoying this food. Thank, thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Considering the time right now, uh, Bhante, do you have time for maybe one question? Uh, uh, we have time for one question. A precious one question. Anyone who has a question for Bhante when we talk? Yeah, I think we are all um, want to be considerate for your meal time. So I guess let's proceed with um, okay. sharing of merits. Okay, Bhante. sure. Uh, yeah, we can proceed. Can we have one one of our next slide, please. Um, this is the, the the mother of one of our members here, uh, in memory of Madam Wee Ha Q, thirteen April nineteen thirty four to 24 February 2022. So uh, we're sharing merits to uh, have Madam Wee in mind as well. Bhante, you can okay. continue. Thank you. Okay, let's share these merits with the uh, guardian devas, protective devas uh, first. So having listening to this Dhamma talk, you all uh, reflect on your life and the importance of eating so this is actually practicing the Dhamma. So by this power of listening to this Dhamma talk, may divine beings be well and happy. May they extend protection towards us. Say sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And especially we are going to transfer merits uh, for the uh, one of the members of this Buddhist fellowship. So uh, let's say are these merits with her. Wherever she is, May she be well and happy. May she gain good health. May she gain good life, good wishes. And finally, may she attain the supreme bliss of nirvana. Say sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sabbitiyo vivajjantu sabbarogo vinasatu mate bhavat vantarayo sukhidi gayuko bhava Bhavatu sabba mangalam rakkantu sabba devata sabba buddha nubhavena sabba dhamma nubhavena sabba sangha nubhavena sadha sotti bhavantu te sadhu 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 May you all be well and happy. Sadhu 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 Let's pay three respects to Bhante. And then in Anjali, let's invite Bhante to the library for lunch. Oh, is it? Sorry, Bhante, it will be the Sangha room first. They will inform you when the lunch is ready. Okay, 
Chief, brothers and sisters, um, I've got some announcements and then we will go into the closing puja for today. Um, so we have a Zoom talk today by Bhante Dhamma, Dhamika, sorry, by Bhante Dhamika. It's at 4.30. Um, no registration is required and the link is in the poster. Uh, the, we will be actually tagging this within the Facebook and YouTube as well for your ease of access. Next one, we have a talk, Live Happily, Die Peacefully by Sister Meta Rijaya, who is very popular a speaker on this. Um, it will be today, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Singapore time, and it's in Bahasa. Again, there is a link um, and a Zoom ID and passcode for you if you can understand Bahasa for this talk. Month of April, the Sunday talk, this is the schedule at the moment and starting, starting the ball rolling will be Sister Sylvia Bay, Must We Meditate? So do join us next Sunday for the talk. Dhamma Foundation course two, the course is ongoing. There should still be slots for online courses. I think on-site is currently full. Um, if you would like to make further inquiries, you can consult the um, office or you can register using the tiny URL that we have on the poster. BF Junior Youth, this is the program, Saturday 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. for age 13 to 16. Those who are interested, please contact Brother Siyuan. Next, we have the BF Junior. Um, everything is on Zoom at the moment, 10th and 24th April. And we have the Rahula Connects as well. So again, online program. Yin Yoga for Meditation. This session is now Zoom only, 7th April to 9th June 2022, every Thursday, 7.30 p.m. to 8.45. And the last one is, we welcome donations to help build our Dharma home. You can scan the, um, the QR code and you can go to the website. There's a lot of very interesting information on the website and also different means of, uh, for you to donate you can donate library, you can donate um, help with the building funds in different ways. So with that, we will go into dedication of merits and closing puja for today. In Anjali, let us invite all sentient beings to participate in our quiet merits. Ita vata cha amhehi Samparam punya samparam Sabbe deva anumodantu Sabba sampati siddhiya Eta vata cha amhehi Samparam punya samparam Sabbe buta anumodantu Sabba sampati siddhiya Eta vata cha amhehi Samparam punya samparam Sabbe sata anumodantu Sabba sampati siddhiya Let us dedicate the merits of participating in the wholesome Dharma activity to our departed relatives and friends. Idam me nati nang hon tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. Idam me nati nang hon tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. Idam me nati nang hon tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. End of service dedication. I dedicate the merits which I have accumulated to the cultivation of my mind in order to bring happiness and benefits to all sentient beings. I dedicate the merits to my parents, children, spouse, relatives, friends, colleagues, and my adversaries, wishing them long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity. May we never part from a triple gem, 
and may we always walk the path towards enlightenment. Let us pay respects to the Triple Gem. Arahang Samma Sambudo Bhagawa Buddham Bhagawantang Aviva Devi Swakato Bhagawata Damo Damang Namasami Supati Pano Bhagawato Sahawaka Sango Sangang Namami Sadhu 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 Thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the talk. Have a great Sunday and see you next week.